Um, with regard to scoring, uh, obviously the different colored balls have a value to them, and depending on which part of the target they land in, they have a multiplier that adds that up. We can't do that in our head, so when, we, when the firing is over, the kids are told, go pick up the balls from your team that are on the floor. Our volunteers pick up only the balls that are in the pool or in the, in the bucket. They'll run them over to the scoring table. We organize them by team number. Somebody records how many balls of what type in the bucket or the pool get put in. Then they get sent up to the headquarters where the computer actually does the multiplication for the weighting. So we cannot tell you what the score, your final score is until we tabulate everything. Unlike rubber band catapult where we can do it right then. But that was three, four years ago. Um, so asking me what the, how they scored, I can't tell you because uh, I don't know. Um, this scoring. Um, basically, we do it up here. Um, if, there's a, if there's a tie that we can't break, we use your data chart. So if you don't have one, it's going to affect whether you meddle or not. So please have one. And the fancier it is or the more organized it is, we may say, well, this one's prettier than this one, or obviously they were more organized in how they set stuff up. That, that'll be the subjective tie break if we can't do it numerically. Yes? With a data log or a practice log, is there like some format that we need to follow? Do you have? We have some loose outlines in here. Typically, it's eight and a half by 11. You can do, you know, like a two-sided graph if you want. You can do multiple pages, single page, you know, because you, you may have, uh, you might have different sized rubber bands, for example, to do different distances. So you might say for rubber band type one, there's chart number one, at this distance and this angle or that length of pull, uh, it yields this result. And you can throw it, either, you know, through practice, you'll throw out all the information that doesn't yield half meter increments uh, for distance, right? I mean, if it's going four and three quarters, well, that's not because you're set up for half meter increments. So, yeah, but the, the format, it, it's pretty loose, but the more organized you are about setting up some sort of way to quantify your results. Uh, so I can't stress, the kids have to practice to, to know that. And we've kind of doubled their work by adding that half meter uh, rule to the, to the game. Um, so for those of you who just came in, uh, just a show of hands, who's new? Okay. All right, so I'm going to run through this real quick again. Uh, you're trying to hit with 15 ping pong balls, a target in the middle of the floor with eight other teams. They're firing ping pong balls at a pool with a bucket in the middle. As long as the balls are hit the bucket or the pool, they count. For, uh, with, for points that are weighted, depending on what, the, what they're in. Um, and uh, whoever gets the highest score, obviously, gets the, uh, the, uh, the higher medal, if you will. Um, distances vary from 4 meters to 8 meters, uh, uh, with the 8 teams around that pool uh, at any given time. Uh, and they won't know what that distance is until the day of the event. So you have to practice, uh, which is what I was just talking about, uh, using your machine and, and recording how your machine for, performs for those given distances. So you know how to set up your machine uh, the day of the event. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, when you, uh, for those that have also just come in, the um, the device that you build, there's no real uh, set requirements other than the, the energy used to propel your ping pong balls is of last American nature. You choose what that is, rubber bands, bungee cords, uh, inner tubes, anything of last American. You cannot use multi-loaders, gas charging, uh, uh, things like uh, that nature. Uh, the device has to be on rubber feet to protect the floors in the gym. 
uh, and that's uh, hard and fast. And oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention that's very important, goggles. These are my cheaters, these are not goggles. So even if you wear glasses, you have to wear goggles on the floor. Uh, not so much because the ping pong ball is going to hurt you if, if it you know, hits somebody because it's pretty low energy. But we've seen devices that basically fail and the rubber band or the bungee cord might snap back and hit someone in the face. Uh, it has happened. Uh, so we're insisting that when you're on the floor, when they're, the teams are on the floor, they have to have goggles or they cannot shoot. They don't have to be impounded because some teams use goggles for other events, but they have to have them for the shoot and they have, or they won't be allowed to shoot. So very important rule that's in the rules. Yes? Goggles with the elastic band or safety glasses with the side shields? And uh, I'm not that fussy. I know some people always say, well, my kid wears glasses. I said, that's true, so do I, and when I'm out in the field, I have to wear uh, safety goggles. I hate them uh, because I'm constantly doing this to take data, uh, but it, it's just kind of a fact of life. So the glasses are okay then? Yeah, uh, just but safety glasses of some sort. Yeah. Question, yes. um, on the pads, if yes. you have wheels on the bottom? Like rubber wheels? Mm -hmm. That would be fine. Okay. The problem arose from fasteners that would fall through the base. Yeah. And because some of the kids had fairly heavy devices, instead of lifting them, they would push them. And we had a couple of really bad scratches on the gym floor. Yeah. So we kind of tried to mitigate that. Where do yes. the coaches can sit on the sideline along with the parents. Uh, once once you checked in and, uh, okay, now it's time to shoot, you know, we wait, we have a kind of a Disney line. In the stands. Um, in the stands, yeah, because uh, it's a pretty big gymnasium on the big day. Um, we don't want you to coach from the side during the day. It's kind of like the SATs. Once you've studied, if you don't know it now, you're not going to know it. Let them do their thing and, and, and you know, have fun and just go with it. You know? So, uh, yes? I have a question. You said no electricity. Correct. Um, can you turn these battery operated? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you on that. Uh, typically, we don't allow uh, here. Actually, I can, I can, yeah. <laughs> no auto loading, multi chamber devices, one ball at a time. Uh, launchers incorporating any electrical components, compressed gas, liquid, or metal springs are forbidden. So you can't use a laser? Laser, okay, lasers you mean for pointing? We have allowed that in the past, yes. But for the device itself, the actual fire, for the firing and things like that, no. But a laser is, is okay. Some people were concerned about uh, flashing it in other people's eyes, but typically it hasn't been a problem. It should not be reflection of the And it can be a platform. That's a good point. Okay. Um, is there a time limit? Pardon me? Is yeah. there a time limit? Yeah. Uh, what will happen is we'll set eight, typically eight teams at a time around this target uh, because that creates uh, lots and lots of chaos because there's eight times 15 balls flying from every direction. So you're going to get funky bounces in the air, on the ground, in and out of the pool, out or into the pool. It just is what it is. Uh, we tell them, uh, once we set them up and they have their distance, we tell them go. They get up to the, to the shooting line. From that point, they have four minutes. Four minutes is a long time, as I told the, the first group. It's a long time to shoot 15 balls. Uh, even if you're making adjustments as you go, because all of a sudden, for whatever reason, your machine isn't performing like it did at home in your garage or your basement, they still have enough time to, to make adjustments, usually. And there's <coughs> very rarely have we seen people not get all their, their, their ping pong balls off in that time period. We actually cut it back from five, because it would have been like an eternity. Does yes. practice meet dates? Like, is it like the competition? Is it kind of set up as a competition? The pr yes, it is. Um, so there's like, <coughs> one is a little bit more loosely Utica kind of is like, held. Utica is a competition for practice. Utica is, um, Utica Kings goes, when they do their practice meet, it's literally a practice meet. There's no competition. Right. Yeah, yeah. But they'll get a feel of all the team students. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we want, we want to, we, yeah, I mean, the practice meets tend to be a lot smaller, so we may only shoot 
two to four teams at a time, uh, just because they have other uh, ac activities to be at. Uh, but it's kind of a mini, a mini get to know this is what it's going to feel like, but it's going to be eight teams, and there's, gonna, there's just a ton of people that kind of, if you haven't been there. So, yeah. Yes? Sorry, for those just coming in, the practice meets are? Uh, they have district meets, uh, Utica, South and Cone, uh, just the Lance district. Cruz, yeah. The yeah, there's four, uh, four, four of them, and I'll be at all four. So. Okay, Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley, yeah. Um, you mentioned the pool and the buckets. How like how tall is the pool? Is it okay, uh, the, the height of the pool, I don't have it in my pool. Yeah. Is it 13 inches? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, approximately 13 inches tall, approximately 49 inside, 58 outside. It's a typical kiddies pool uh, with three three rings and a slightly inflatable ba uh, pad in the bottom, and then we add a, a, a foam pad onto which we set the uh, the hard bucket from Home Depot, our sponsor. So uh, some people say, well, I wish it was this or I wish it was that. And I said, it is what it is. Everyone has to live by the same rules. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a non separate, right? Just deal with it. Yes? Did I hear you? I, no one's giving me the rules yet. But did I hear you say that it's going half this year? Half meter increments. Four, four and a half, five, five and a half, all the way up to eight. OK. So it, it increases the, the double practice load. Is eight and a half part of it? Uh, no, eight, eight, is the, eight is the upper limit. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. the rules are on the McComb website? Yes. Or if you, yeah. Please, yeah. Whatever you do, go on the website, uh, www.macombso.org, uh, and select elementary, look for ping pong, read this year's rules. They are not the same as last year's. We have slight changes. And you don't want to be uh, relying on last year's rules or the year before. Come to find out you're, you, you've not met the requirements for, for this year. Uh, there aren't too many, uh, but we don't want we don't want to disappoint the kids either. If, so, if there are any questions on the rules, is there a mechanism on the page to yeah, submit a question? You can submit a question. The question will get sent to me. Uh, me and Ron will answer it. Send it back. So go on the website, not today, and then wait till you know, and that's for the last time. Go on regularly because we'll answer questions that come up from other teams <coughs> so that we can share it with everybody in here. Because there's stuff that, you know, we, we put together a set of rules and we may not have talked about something. You guys come up with some kind of a half, you think it's a half-baked question, and we go, oh, we never thought about that. So yeah, we have to, we have to give you some level of guidance on that, so don't be shy, whatever. Uh, let's see, uh, for the ones that came in, maybe I didn't mention this, uh, during impound, you have to bring in everything that you need to shoot that device. The device itself, the ping pong balls, the data charts, all uh, team named and team numbered, identified so that we can go back to them if we need to. Uh, don't be late because that's a twenty dollar pen uh, twenty point penalty. Not twenty dollars, sorry. <laughs> Unless you want to give uh, and fifty. Uh, it's important to know you want data charts because that's fifty points additional. So, uh, any other questions? Yeah. The, the rule about manually weighing down the front edge, like, is it just for the front edge, can they weigh down the base points down the back? You can you can weigh down any part of the device you want. The, the, the issue comes from we don't want if this is the line, the shooting line, nothing is allowed to cross that, including the, the team players, the, the data charts. So if they're here, that's a violation. If they're here out to the side, that's not a violation. Uh, <coughs> And uh, to go back, I think it was, you had a question about uh, the data charts. Score, distance to target, elevation or angle of shooting, the, the stretch of the membrane, the type of membrane, the size of the membrane, the diameter or the, or the width, um, any other attributes that you might think about, uh, elevation. Uh, uh, all of those are, are uh, required, uh, or parameters that you can set up your data charts, but you use at least, I think three is the, uh, is the governing number. Three, yeah. And, uh, oh, and, oh, they, uh, they added 
something that I didn't know about. Practice log shall include a minimum of three variables and 20 launches related to launch performance, which shouldn't be hard to do because between four and eight that half meter increments the just do a couple of uh, hits at different uh, different settings, and you'll hit 20. You'll hit 20. And again, it doesn't have to be a one sheet data chart; it can be multiple sheets if you like. Um, let's see. Good job. The kids are not allowed to pick up or touch any of the any of the balls that hit the pool, are in the pool, or the bucket. That's the purview of the volunteers and the supervisors who are. That way, there can be no question as to whether or not. Uh, a ball entered the pool or not, and it keeps the scoring kind of separate from the, from the kids. Um, and we will not typically let you take your uh, your device home once you're done shooting. We'll send you back to impound, and at the end of the day, when all the scoring is done, then you can pick up your, your devices. Uh, that way, if there's an issue uh, that we're trying to resolve uh, scoring uh, before we do the awards, we have the opportunity to go back and look and said, okay, that does mean to, you know, maybe we missed something and it, the, the, the device may or may not meet the requirements that were set forth in the rules, or maybe the data chart, maybe somebody forgot their data charts, it's like, well, you either have to have one or we're going to give you a penalty. And no unsafe behavior either, we can, we can kind of thing you we can kind of halt the shoot for that if, if they're getting a bit silly. But uh, really that's not the problem. Uh, any other questions? Easy questions? questions? You, need, you need to have a student. Pardon me? You need to have a student present at drop off. Yeah, that's a new rule this year. Uh, mainly we're trying to see if we can, you know, if we ask them a question about, we want to see that they understand what they're, why they did the device the way they did, why they built it the way they did, or do they understand what it is that they're doing. So it's a way of gauging whether they, you know, because we want them to, this is kind of a learning thing for them too, right? right? So yeah, it's important to have at least one of the team members there uh, on impact. Yeah. If we have two teams, can one person represent both, one, one student represent both? Uh, B team, or you want one from A and one from B? Usually, I'll check on that, uh, but it's usually one per team, I'll, I'll check. It's a good question on alternates. Can yeah. Like say there was an emergency with one of the team members, have another person, I mean, come in and take their place. If oh, if, oh, if there was a, if there not was not alternative team, they talked about that, but just someone to step in. As long as it doesn't go, you can only have six team members on the whole team from the school. Okay. So, so if if that child who turns up sick that day and can do both of the events that they're alternating in they can replace it. But if it, that child steps in for ping pong and that puts you up to 17, no. You all can only have 16 kids that actually can compete on the actual team. We actually have two teams. We have a team A and we have the team B, which they there's, started there's a couple of years ago. Right. So that's what we're asking. But yeah, you can only have Those 16 are kids that I'm competing. Not really that aware of I, don't, I, I kind of just focus on this event. 16 as a whole so, yeah. school. Is there a way when we impound them that we could have it roast off um, or put them in a spot? Because like I know in subsequent years, like the kids and some parents were trampling through where everything was. And well, we had some issues where kids started playing with ours and then it wasn't yeah, situated. Well, they shouldn't be. Once, the, once yeah. they impound it, they should leave the area. They're supposed to leave the area. Yeah. And you, you go back only to drop your stuff off or the kids go there to pick it up when it's their time to shoot. And then I guess the follow-up question to that is we've had... So I've seen parents like taking video videos of what everybody's doing and like taking videos basically of your design. Yeah. And exactly. so I had kids when we say, Coach, they're copying us, they're copying us, and I didn't know the right answer to them. Well, aside from let's just work harder kind of thing. So we're, we have we had signs up last year that said no photography and, yeah. and filming of the devices. So we're we're going to try and I'll be talking to Ron about that because we we don't want. The, the parents kind of walking through. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Yeah, like it was, it was I, like yeah we saw the same thing. Felt gross. Uh, we were referring <laughs> to 
you know, too. I, I don't know how we monitor what's an old device and what's a new one, because I've seen hundreds of devices. Right. And I couldn't remember five minutes after the event, what did that thing look like? Yeah, for sure. Because it's all short-term. I mean, everything happens so fast, it's all throughput. It's all just, you know, straight throughput with no, with no memory with retention whatsoever. So it's hard to tell. We, we even thought about photographing each device as it got logged in so we could show, well, no way you use this left. That's a lot of effort to go through so you have 80 teams. Well, people should just play by the rules anyway. No. Oh, yeah. I, I, would, I would say don't overthink the rules. Yeah. Try not to overthink the rules and, you know, get too lawyer-like and, well, you know, how much can I bend? Just kind of go with the, the spirit of the, of the rules more than anything else, you know. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't think, you know, the kids should be having fun, but they should be learning at the same time. So, uh, any other questions, silly or otherwise? Because there's no such thing as I said before. It's a silly question. Did you talk about building now before? Building, building the building device. The uh, well, there's no specific material. That, I mean, you can make it out of cardboard, paper, metal, plastic. Uh, you can uh, basically the, the biggest thing. Uh, basically the three years we've done this event is that the energy that's used to propel the ping pong ball is elastomeric in nature. That's a nice open wind, uh, open ended way of saying rubber band, bungee cord, inner tube, and anything else you might be able to think of uh, that's somehow elastomeric that imparts energy. Um, beyond that, it, doesn't matter, it could be as big as a bus, it could be this big. I've seen handheld devices that are literally this big, and I've seen them this big. It's, it's really up to the kids. Um, if we prefer the kids build the device on their own and come up with the ideas, but obviously if you're putting together something and using power tools and power saws and things like that, there's no problem with adult supervision or assistance in that, in that way at all. That's not a problem. You know, we just don't want to see that to, the pristine rig that comes in that was done in somebody's uh, metal shop mm -hmm. that is accurate to, you know, a, a ten thousandths of an inch. And I will say this, when you build a device, um, build it so it's fairly not flimsy and it doesn't wobble back and forth. Because just like rubber band catapult, which is how I started with this, if you practice every day and you know you can get that distance, but the thing's shooting over here, or it's so wobbly it's, it's, it's shanking and going over there um, because it's too wobbly. Uh, having a straight line shot is just as important because the more you're off from your, your, your direction, side to side, the less likely you are to, to pardon, hit the target. So you want to you wanna build something that's fairly stiff. Um, I've seen people use little thin tube like this. And it's